It's no surprise that Pokemon Scarlet and Violet were very divisive titles in the Pokemon franchise since Sun and Moon and we all know about how that went, you know what I'm saying? Jesus Christ. But with these games coming out, a lot of people would consider these games kind of bad. And honestly, I can see why. I can't really blame anybody for not liking these games like that. So as you can see, the YouTube chat's right here. Everybody in the YouTube chat say hi to YouTube real quick. Today, we're gonna be reacting to Papa C's, a friend of the channel's video regarding Pokemon Scarlet and Violet being bad or not. And in the comment section below, I would love if you all let me know if Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are bad in your opinion. Maybe good, maybe not, I don't know. And listen to the video. Leave a like and a comment, original video in the description section below, and then let's get up into it. All right. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet were highly anticipated games. That is that true. Came out only 10 months after the previous Pokemon game, Pokemon Legends Arceus. That is true. Some Pokemon fans have been skeptical of Pokemon over the last few main series releases, but- But wait, 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 but why did you leave out- why did he leave out Legends Arceus? Yo, Papa C, bro. What, 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 what you got against? What you got against Peak? What, 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 what are we doing here? What, 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 what's up? Like, what, are we, what are we doing here, man? What about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet? Today, we'll be discussing Pokemon Scarlet and Violet while avoiding any major story spoilers. Talk. What story? You know, what story? You feel me? Man, listen. Worth getting, and if they're really as bad as some people are saying online. Leave a like and subscribe if you want to support the channel. And to give a brief overview of these games, they take place in the Paldea region based off of real world Spain and have pretty much what you would expect from a new Pokemon game being some new Pokemon, some regional forms, an evil team, and an overall plot with some weird convoluted story and some battling gimmick. Okay, and wait. Did anybody realize they basically lied to us about this goddamn like regional forum stuff? Like they gave it, they gave, I forgot, they, they literally named it after like an actual term, an actual like scientific term, just for it to be the exact same thing as a Lowland variations. These are the same thing. This is literally the exact same thing. Now granted, right? They're named differently, that's cool. But these are the exact same Pokemon. Like, what are we talking about? Like, it's, it, it, they just lied to us. They, they, oh my God, Game Freak, I hate you. Scarlet and Violet unique is that each of these stories are broken up into three separate parts that you can do at your own pace. There's the Victory Road story that involves collecting all eight gym badges, becoming the champion, battling your rival Nimona, one of the best rivals in a modern Pokemon game, in my opinion. Okay, why is she the best rival? I just, I just, I just, I just, I just gotta, I just need a, I just need a better, I just need a reason. I just wanna know why. Can somebody in the chat please explain to me why Nimona is a good rival? Cause in my opinion, you meet her and she's already better than you, right? So like, that's not really a rival to me. That That's literally somebody that you're trying to catch up to. You're playing catch up. It's not, it, it'd be different if like, you know, y'all are competing and she started off the, the exact same, like, uh, the exact same start, but like, she's like, yeah, I got like five teams already on you. She's a mentor in my opinion. We use her battles as training sessions. You know what I'm saying? Her team was better than the actual champion of the region. Like she's a champion. This is a champion trainer, y'all. I don't know. To me, that's just not a rival. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. She was the only rival that wasn't a cakewalk. Dennis. I don't know how old you are, but at your grown age, please, for the love of Christ, do not tell me that you struggled on Nimona. Then there's the Path of Legends, which follows the lore and history of the region where you're coming. Let me tell you something, bro. Anybody that thinks Arvin is not the best character in this game is wrong, okay? Accompanied by Arvin, which feels a bit like you're playing against the bosses in Pokemon Legends. Shots my G Nighthawk, bro. Wall Street that follows the story of Team Star. I hate this. Team Star being the evil. I hate. Oh my team, God, I hate this. Fits from the school who banded together. I hate you this so much. I don't care what nobody says, bro. This, this, this was trash. I don't care what nobody says. 
this was garbage. I'm gonna say it. This was probably the worst slash most boring part of this game. The penny reveal was obvious. The backstories for these characters were literally the exact same. It it was it was boring. It was just boring, bro. Want in any order, which is great too. Now there is no level scaling between all of these, which teams. is garbage. Quickly battle the eighth gym leader first and struggle against their high level Pokemon if you really wanted to, or you can explore around and fight different Team Star bases or explore with Arvin. Which Talking is trash. Joy will let you know what is recommended to do next, although she usually says the wrong suggestion. I've heard she just suggests whatever's nearby. Yes. So while I played through Scarlet and Violet, I just followed a map that showed the intended order to do everything at least the order that everything was in terms of levels. While many people yes. would have preferred level scaling to make it so you can truly do anything you want in any order, that would mess up some teams that some gym leaders would have. That's because true. Part of the challenge for some of these trainers that you battle is them having fully evolved Pokemon. Or okay, so so in my, um, I did a video. It was, let's make the perfect Pokemon game, right? And this video included three different teams. Every gym leader should have three different teams. And depending on how many gym badges you have is when they switch it, right? So like level scaling, we'll do two levels. The ace, uh, the ace Pokemon will be two levels above your strongest leveled uh, Pokemon. And the rest of their team will be two levels under it, right? Every gym leader would have three different teams depending on how many gym badges you have. So obviously in this in this game, technically there's like 18 gym badges, right? But in a traditional Pokemon sense, you would have um you would have like maybe one at the fourth gym badge, one at the seventh, and then your seventh and eighth gym leaders would be like they'd have their final teams and shit that are pushing like maybe like level like 50 something like that and then when you get into the elite fours you start actually fighting like actual actual battles and stuff like that because all the trainers in victory road are going to be the exact same levels as you right so i think giving these pokemon trainers three different teams for like certain level gauges for like their um for like uh certain check marks in the game because if you notice right every single pokemon game the moment you get to that fourth gym badge the moment you get to that fourth gym badge the game that ass changes for it my my answer to that you know anyway having a pokemon with a certain move set and scaling would completely eliminate the ability to be under leveled or over leveled which would also skew the difficulty a bit I guess they could technically just have a few different teams depending on what level you are for each NPC battle, or they could just scale your Pokemon up to their levels. But I think what we got was a pretty good for Game Freak's first attempt at a proper open world game, as Legends Arceus wasn't exactly open world. But it was peak. It was peak, I'm afraid. It was, it was, it was... I honestly think this is the best Pokemon game. I, I At this point, I'm not even going to be nice no more in the timeline. I honestly think this is the best Pokemon game since Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Maybe Black and White 2 for some people. Maybe Black and White for some people. This is the best Pokemon game in a very, very long time. We'll, this should be this should be a docu doc documentary on this game. It, this is nuts. Anyway. Although it definitely could have been better executed. And before you call me a Game Freak apologist in the comments, we'll talk about some negatives in this video too later on. There's some new Pokemon too, a little bit over 100, some of which I still haven't seen yet. And while this is mostly opinion based, I really like the new Pokemon added in this game, especially more than the new Pokemon added in Pokemon Sun and Moon or Pokemon Sword and Shield previously. It seems like they got more creative with the Pokemon they added this time with additions like Nacko, a Mushroom Salt Rock, Palafin, which turns into Superman, then Flamigo, which is literally a Flamingo. I kept seeing cool Pokemon that I wanted to use on my team while playing through this game for the first time, which made exploring a lot more fun, something that has been missing from more recent Pokemon games. Now, that's just so interesting to me because, like, I know a lot of people 
did not like this game. I'm a, I'm a, I know a lot of people did not like this Pokedex at all. A lot of people did not like this Pokedex. I remember, I remember when uh, the, the Pokedex got leaked and I've seen so many people literally attack this Pokedex. And it was interesting too, cause it was like, yo, like they don't look that bad, but the ones that are bad are really, really bad. The ones that are good are phenomenal. Like they, there's literally, it, it's almost black and white. This is, this is the most black and white Pokedex in years, right? It's either you like them or you don't, you know? It's just what it is, man. Like the recent releases of Pokemon games, more specifically Sun and Moon and Sword and Shield, are rather linear with their routes and how you explore them, with many of them just being literal straight lines, more so in Sun and Moon, with little exploration unlike in previous Pokemon games like, say, Ruby and Sapphire or Diamond and Pearl, which feel a bit more open and have a bit more... I'd argue, I'd argue, um, Pokemon Sword and Shield their routes are worse than uh, Sun and Moon's. I hate Sword and Shield. ...areas to explore, which really help build up the world. With Scarlet and Violet, we don't see the exact same thing as those older Pokemon games, but we do have a much more open world to explore that isn't linear, and unlike in Legends Arceus, there's also actual cities in this region and buildings to make the world feel a bit more full, and you can walk to each different area instead of having to rely on your map to fast travel like in Legends Arceus. This is a big improvement in my opinion, as a lot of the time I spent on my first playthrough of Scarlet and Violet was just exploring all these various areas, wandering into Team Star bases and other areas, and doing terror raids. These terror raids function very similar to the raids we saw in Pokemon Sword and Shield, except they can be found all over the world and aren't just limited to the wild area or DLC area like they were in Sword and Shield. These make them a lot more accessible while playing through the story and allow me to collect a lot of useful items and EXP candies to help level up while going through the main story. Okay. Now, I'm not gonna hold you. The amount of XS's and like, and S's that I've gotten in this run was terrible. I played the game maybe like twice. I have like maybe like, 200 hours in each of my playthroughs, right? And I, at some point, they just were not dropping anything for me. Like, it took until the little snow area to for me to actually get, like, L's and, and uh, medium rare candies or whatever. And I was just like, why? 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 In terms of terrestrialization in general, this generation's gimmick, it wasn't really fully explained in the story too well, and it also doesn't really tie in with legendary Pokemon in this game like Dynamaxing did in Sword and Shield with Eternatus, but it's kind of like a toned down version of Dynamaxing where a Pokemon can change their type to one of these Terra types, then get an extra stab boost for using a move of that type, but it doesn't power up all of that Pokemon's moves like Dynamaxing did. This can be used to completely change a Pokemon's type too. For example, in the game, you are given a gift Pikachu if you get the game before, I think, the end of February. And while Pikachu is normally an electric type Pokemon, it has the Terra type of flying, so that can be used to dodge earthquakes, which can be really cool in competitive battling. I haven't really had a chance to mess around with competitive battling or online battlings at all yet, but the battle timer being only 20 minutes long is back. This means that a lot of your 6v6 battles will just end in time, which isn't much of an issue while playing through the core game, but if you're a competitive battler or somebody who just likes battling online, this is a real bummer since 20 minutes a lot of the times just isn't enough. I don't understand why they don't make it variable and have it so you can set it for as long as you want or as quick as you want. The rest of the online functionality was pretty good though when it worked. Many online terror raids that you can join with random other players would just fail to connect and you would have to wait to refresh the page to see newer raids even if none of the raids were joinable anymore, you still had to wait. It was rather frustrating, but staples such as Surprise Trade, formerly known as Wonder Trade, and Trading with a Link Code Return, which is rather nice. Right. Another cool online feature they have wait, is the ability wait, to- Wait, 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 but we also gotta talk about how bad uh, the latency in these raids are. Like. The latency and the raids are genuinely some of the worst, like, Pokemon experiences I've ever had in my life. For me, at one point, when I beat Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, 
Uh, I beat Scarlet on YouTube, but I beat Violet on um on my own. There's nothing to do in the after game besides raids, right? And I guess shiny hunting if you're into that. I'm not into that. Whatever, right? Literally, me playing on raids made me realize that like maybe Nintendo is just a terrible like online experience like provider in general because the latency that i get on on these raids is genuinely terrible i will sit here and not be able to move at all and four or five turns would have passed already and it would be like wait a minute why is this thing either not dying or um or like, why is the shield not broken? We've already hit this thing. And it'll be like, oh yeah, it'll stop and it'll pause. Then like five things will happen at once. And it'll be like, what's going on, bro? Then the timer is 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 always dropping down. But obviously when you when somebody dies, right? The, the, the timer goes down or whatever, whatever. But not even that, like the timer itself, the timer itself continues as if there isn't a latency issue. So it's almost like, imagine like this timer going down slowly 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 and you're sitting there right waiting to attack mind you and everybody else is just sitting there and out of nowhere it catches up and like five attacks go out it's like what's going on here bro man you basically join other people's worlds I'll talk about this more later, but this is a great way of getting version exclusive Pokemon or just showing off your new Pokemon to a friend. I think this feature has a lot of possibilities that can only get better over time, and I think there's a lot with this. And now, the big I one. agree. Let's talk about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's performance on the Switch. Man. Quite simply, it's not great. It's bad. There are many Listen, I'm, I'm tired of it. I'm tired. Stop being nice. It's bad. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, if we're talking performance issues, graphics, all that stuff, it's bad. We got to stop being nice because we like Pokemon and because we, wanna, we don't want to get attacked by the real, like the weirdos in the fan base. It's bad. These games, performance-wise, graphically, are terrible. And I really hate when people say that Pokemon graphics don't matter when they've mattered since Let's Go. I don't give a damn what nobody says. The moment Pokemon went 3D, all that Pokemon isn't known for graphics stuff went out the way. Just say you don't care for graphics and that's fine, right? But don't sit here and say that graphics don't matter when they've literally, for the last six or seven years now, have sat here and chased after after like this like, like cell shaded experience that they just keep failing at. They keep failing at it. It's bad. Literally, it's bad. Man. The game will just drop frames. Some Pokemon and characters will move like a slideshow if they're more than 10 feet away from you, and you might experience some crashes. I've heard mixed things about crashes, as most people seem to have had only a small amount of crashes or none at all. I have five. Other people have been saying that their game is constantly crashing for them, which can be very frustrating. This could be caused from a wide variety of reasons, whether it's the Switch itself, the way the game is made, or possibly how some people just take care of their Switch. But the bottom line is these issues shouldn't be as noticeable as they are, and the crashes should definitely be minimalized more than they already are. It doesn't exactly take away from the overall gameplay, however, but even if you are a more casual Pokemon fan or a more casual gamer, even if you don't really care about the technical side of video games, you will notice the game's weird performance. On the bright side though, while the lack of polish is far from ideal and should have been addressed ahead of release, the game itself in terms of the story, what you can do in the game, and how you can adventure throughout it, still feel rather complete to me. What I mean by that is if you were to look at a Pokemon game like Sword and Shield for example, while the graphics weren't stellar on that game either, the performance was fine, and it didn't have nearly as many issues as Scarlet and Violet when it comes to performance, 
However, Pokemon Sword and Shield felt more bare when it comes to the content you can do while playing the actual game. There wasn't much of a post game in Sword and Shield, and the whole Evil Team and Macro Cosmos arc felt a bit rushed and unexplored. While Scarlet and Violet had a lot more to do compared to Sword and Shield, at the expense of a less optimal performance. For example, the first time I played Sword and Shield, I beat it in about 13 or 14 hours, while my first playthrough of Scarlet and Violet took 20 hours and I thought I was rushing through it. While I'd obviously prefer to have it both ways, a game that has good performance and a lot of content, uh. and there really isn't much an excuse as to why we can't have it that way, I'll take performance hiccups in a game that feels full of content rather than a smoother running game that feels like it has less content overall. We don't really know the exact cause for these issues, I've heard a lot of rumors and speculation as to why the game performs the way it does, it could be from a very wide array of factors. But at the very least, I think that if you look at the last few Pokemon games released, mainly Legends Arceus and Scarlet and Violet, it does seem like Game Freak is listening and heading in the right direction again, albeit at a slower pace. Right. Now, in terms of the content and features in Scarlet and Violet, there's quite a lot in it to add a lot of replayability to this game to pour countless hours into. First, we have the three separate stories you can do as we discussed earlier, offering three unique experiences. And there's a few smaller... We need to stop acting like this game is that like expansive. I, I I'm I'm really I'm really tired of that. I'm not gonna hold you. This game is not that expansive. There is no replay value if the game makes you have to play all three story modes. Literally, it makes no sense. It makes no sense, bro. If the game makes you have to beat all three story modes to get to the end of the game. There's no replayability in it. There, there isn't. There, there, it's not an open. Listen, I think a lot of people, I, I think Game Freak lied to us. You know how like back in Sword and Shield, they said that, oh yeah, we're going to new animations. And all the animations were in the Dynamax forms and the Dynamax animations or whatever. This is the exact same thing. They said open world, and sure, it's open world, right? But it's not like the full attempt at open world that you've seen other games do. Because for me, it's like if you have to beat all three storylines to get to the end of the game, then it's not open world. Because at some point, you're going to literally sit here and... It makes no sense why, like, oh, yeah, I can beat the gym and I can't get the end of the game. I can beat Arvin's story and I can't get the end of the game, despite Arvin's story being what the end of the game is. I can't beat Team uh, Star story and get the end of the game. You cannot. You cannot actively play one storyline and be able to go through it. We got to stop making this this entire game seem like it's just like open world experience. It's just not that. It's just it's not that at all. Breath of the Wild. I know a lot of people hate Breath of the Wild. Let's do Elden Ring, right? You can literally skip bosses in the entire game to get to the very end of all those of both of those games. In Breath of the Wild, you can go straight to the ending. Literally. This is not that. And that's, I, I, I need people to realize that, bro. Man. Features or mechanics added like sandwiches. Every Pokemon game has to have their own weird, unique food for some reason, which can help with breeding Pokemon or catching Pokemon or training Pokemon. You can find shops all across the region to get sandwich ingredients to craft the perfect sandwich for your team. And you can even buy pre-made sandwiches among some other food that have a similar effect to the sandwiches or just make sandwiches in your picnic. The Picnic allows you to interact with your party Pokemon similar to the camp in Pokemon Sword and Shield. This time though, you breed your Pokemon by going into the Picnic, and any egg that is laid by your Pokemon goes in this basket and then goes right into your PC from there. 
This does allow you to stockpile a lot of eggs a bit easier than previous Pokemon games, but it is annoying that you have to hatch all of those eggs you then store in your PC. And it's a lot easier to have more leftover eggs, and leftover eggs while breeding is just annoying to deal with. I personally prefer the older daycare method when it comes to hatching Pokemon, where you just have one Pokemon with flame body, then fill out the rest of your party with eggs, mainly because that method features a lot less leftover eggs. But I have heard that others prefer this new method, and I don't really breed that much anyway, so I won't use it that much personally. Another neat mechanic to help with leveling up is auto battling. This is similar to what we saw in Pokemon Legends Arceus where you can send out a Pokemon while you're journeying across the region and it'll just battle for you, as long as you don't get too far away from it. Right. There were also some times where I would send out my Pokemon and it just wouldn't battle a Pokemon that was right in front of it. This right. is useful in some situations, but it's far from perfect. First, you eating a sandwich and a Fuego getting the salad toss right in front of you? I wish I was him. You get far less XP from auto battling this way, which is somewhat understandable, but it makes it practically worthless once you reach the later portion of the game since the XP you get is so low. On top of that, Pokemon won't evolve if they leveled up from an auto battle, and they won't learn new moves either. The latter isn't too much of an issue since you can just relearn your old moves by going into your party summary and then just teach them from there. Right. Not being able to manually evolve your Pokemon from your party like you did in Legends Arceus feels a bit backwards. Right. Overall, it's still a good feature right. that is worth using, especially in the early game when you're first starting out, but it's in need of some improvement still. But at the very least, it's still a cool new feature. Now these next complaints, if you want to call them that, probably don't affect most players. It's more so things that make creating content or doing challenges on this run a bit more annoying. First, for Nuzlocke challenges, there's a few limitations. If you're doing a hardcore variant, you can switch your battle style to set to make it so you don't get a free don't know why. after each KO. So you have to just click no every time a new Pokemon would be sent out by an NPC. It's not a huge deal, just annoying, especially considering that this has been in literally every other Pokemon game, so right. why is it not in this one? Right. You also can't turn off battle animations, which was nice to cut down on some time while grinding and right. was only used in speedruns for faster times. Right. This was also in every other Pokemon game since Red and Blue, so it's really strange to see it just absent here. And last, the co-op, if that's what you really want to call it, is rather limited. While going to other people's worlds and catching their right. interesting Pokemon is great, there really isn't that much you can do together aside from battle, trade, or run around and catch Pokemon together. But you don't even need to go to other people's worlds to battle and trade in the first place. When this feature was first revealed, I was hoping that the co-op would work more similarly to the local co-op we saw in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, where it made every battle a double battle so you and a friend can even do all of the gym battles together and truly play the game together. This would have been so much more fun for co-op playthroughs of this game, right. especially after having it in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee and not even be able to use it online, which really limited that game's use of that feature. And that's pretty much everything I wanted to say about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. So in conclusion, despite their flaws and these complaints I have on them, I feel like this video was more negative than positive now that I read it out loud. They're still really fun games that I enjoy a ton and love playing. If you're a Pokemon fan who has at least somewhat enjoyed the last few releases, I'm sure you'll like these games too. But if you're the type of person who watches Pokemon videos online and made it to this far in the video, and you probably already made your decision anyway. If not, in your safe. Man, listen to me, bro. I, I want you to know I have so many people say this is the best Pokemon game in years. And I, I, I don't understand because this is the second best Pokemon game that released this year. I'm, I'm so lost. Like, I'm so, like, 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 chat, like, 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 chat, like, like, chat, like, 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 chat, like. Like chat, like there's no way. Like they, they, are are they, are we talking about the same game here? Like are we chat? Are we, are we talking about the same game here? Are we are we are we good? Are we nuts? Like are we, are we talking about the same game here? Like come on, bro. Like like come on, bro. Like come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Like what are we what are we, what are we doing, bro? Imagine, right? No, exactly. Imagine, right? Imagine. I'ma just listen. I'ma just, you know, I listen. I'ma listen. 
If you enjoy the games, that's fine, right? But with that being said, thank you all for watching. Leave a like and a comment. Original video in the description section below. And, uh, you know, I'm going to do a case study on why Legends of Arceus is better. I'm, 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 when I'm more sober. As you can tell, I'm drunk. That shouldn't be in the video. Leave a like.